This week it feels like a cross between an old school Latin lesson and a Call of Duty gamer's heaven because it's the turn of the venari, or to use a loose Latin translation, the huntress. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. As most of you know, there are a couple of things I really like. One of them is the fact that manufacturers do try to bring different things out to suit very different tastes and preferences of the air gun shooting community. The other thing I really like is the BSA Hammer Forge Barrel. This week's rifle covers both of those points, so it's time to trial one of the lesser-known budget PCPs from the guys and girls in Birmingham. And no, I'm not going to try a West Country accent. The Gamo Venari Tactical PCP. It comes in a package form and, above all, as I've already said, it carries their superb Hammer Forge barrel. Let's take a closer look, shall we? It is all black from head to toe, or matte black silencer to butt pad, that is. It is 111 centimetres long with a 78 centimetre barrel and tops the scales all in at 3.9 kilograms, which is not that bad. Bolt action with 10 round magazine in 177 or 22. Starting from the front then we have a rather slim moderator or silencer in a nice matte black finish. Now that is quite long at 195mm and is probably this length to make up for its slimmer design and trying to make up a more sound deadening all important volume by which I mean internal space kind of volume. This, added to that known for its accuracy barrel, does make this a long, sleek rifle. Below the barrel is the air cylinder, with the gamo gauge on the front, which is clear and easy to read and shows the usual 232 bar maximum fill pressure. It is again worth stating that in the UK sub 12 foot pound power output, this should really be filled to around a maximum 200 bar. But the tube on this is longer than such as the GX40 and should give a slightly higher shot count. The filler port is again standard gamo and is behind the gauge and under the clip off dust cover. Moving back, we come to the black polymer ambidextrous stock, which is the main difference that this has from other gamo rifles. This does have some nice recessed flowing curves from front to trigger guard. The forestock has two weaver rails on the side, which could be used for lots of add-ons, but it is mainly intended to be used for the supplied 9 to 11 inch side bipod legs. These simply fit onto the sides and will add stability when you're out and about pest controlling or even down the range. This can then very neatly be tucked away when not needed or when you're transporting it. They do stand very wide apart, a point that some people may not like and others will love it. But they do add pretty good stability to the whole thing. The target work later will be completed shooting from these. Moving back, the trigger is the standard gamo system with the safety that is out in front. Again, once you get used to this, it's a doddle to use and is sure and defined and not at all woolly or vague. This being a tactical type rifle, the grip is more pistol-like with attached stock, which allows not only a thumbs down, but also a thumbs up shooting position. The butt then has an adjustable cheek piece to help you find that all important eye to scope position. Finally, the butt pad itself is finished off with a soft rubber end with removable inserts to allow this to be even softer. 
But of course, with pretty much no recall, there's no real need to make any changes. This is a bolt action rifle and it's pretty good. I was talking to somebody recently who had taken delivery of a BSA R10 and a Gamo GX40 at the same time. And he said the bolt was a little stiff on the GX. Then I realized he'd been comparing it to the silky smooth R10's bolt action. And that is slicker than a Teddy Boy's Brill Cream DA hairstyle. And well, okay, I'll concede that one, but that's pretty unfair on the bolt action on these. They are pretty good. And I do like a bolt action on a traditional shaped gun. This uses the same BSA Gamo 10 round magazine system I've used for years, and they have never let me down, and I've never had a problem with them yet. They're very easy to load, efficient, and even tell you when you've used your last shot. This does come with a scope in the package, and I would say it will do the job. It is one of Gamo's 3 to 9 by 32 scopes and comes with mounts pre-fitted. The reticle is a simple black item without mill dots or the like. It finishes off the kit and helps keep the price to a pretty good budget level. So, with that fitted, time to check out the accuracy of this little sniper outfit. Out at the usual 40 metres, I think. Here goes. Well, it has that terrific barrel, so I was expecting good things from this. It can easily sort out the beer bottle top challenge, but I can't help feeling it is capable of some really tight target grouping with a higher grade scope attached. That would really bring out the best of this little Venari. Now this retails out at about £449 UK and really is a complete package for those guys who like their tactical style rifles and a great gun for the budget. I suppose at that price it allows you a bit of wiggle room for a pump. I really wouldn't want to be a rat, rabbit or pigeon if someone was around with one of these. No doubt somebody is going to ask how it compares to the sub £500 package I set up recently, which includes the Gamo GX40. Well, that doesn't have the tactical stock or those bipod legs, but it has a much better scope to help with the accuracy to complement that excellent barrel. It also has a bag, pellets, upgraded silencer, etc. So they are quite different kits and will suit different people. Me? I can see why people would decide on either. I also know they're very good quality for budget guns. And of course, above all, I still feel we can fly the flag. Because even though the company is a Spanish one, these are made here in the heart of England. I do like a more traditional stock than a tactical one personally, but I know loads of guys who would love the tactical look. One thing to do now is to just get this over the chrono because one thing that BSAs, stroke gamos, especially with these barrels, really like is probably a slightly heavier weighted 177, which this is, than the lighter 8.44 grain. So, first of all, let's check it out. Using the standard 8.44 grain JSB, it saw 761 feet per second which is 10.86 foot-pounds or 14.72 joules. Using the 10.34 grain heavier pellets, it saw a lower 712 feet per second, which is 11.68 foot-pounds or 15.78 joules. So, just as I expected, it prefers the slightly heavier weighted pellets, which is great news if you're going to use this for a spot of pest control. It's also good news because it's lighter and firing faster with the lighter 8.44 grains. Overall, a nice addition to the Gamo range. They're very similar to all the other ones, but they've all got subtle differences, 
which allows you the choice if that's what you want. You know, I've used quite a few BSAs and Gammos in my time, and they're a little bit like a pair of comfortable slippers. You just simply get home, put them on, and you're in familiar, comfortable territory. Now, I've enjoyed this, and I hope you have as well. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. To be sure you get notified when the next one is out, make sure you click the alarm bell. Why not join the thousands of people that are part of all this lot and keep the chat going? Thanks to Vector Air, as usual, and Ryan at BSA for their help with this week's rifle. And as always, most of all, thank you guys for watching. So, just a quick one this time. So please stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week.